Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Baltimore Guys. I'm your host, Bazil. Joining me today is the shipping container lady, Miss Jessica Lewis, who is the co-founder of Mobu Enterprises, which is a shipping container company. Hey, Miss Lewis, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you for coming on. So the reason I wanted to have you on is one, um, I have been thinking about shipping container living for quite some time. Me and my friend, Travis Davis, shout out to the bad guru himself, Travis. And we've been thinking like, man, we can just get a plot of land. Uh, all you need to do is get a shipping container. We can do all this. I've been watching videos online. You know, um, I think a uh, tiny living home living. Uh, there's places, you know, that is around the world that do the shipping container thing, but I haven't really found much here locally, except for out in California. And then once I stumbled upon you on Instagram, I thought, hey, maybe this is my saving grace to get into it. So I wanted to bring you on to first get an understanding of one, how the possibilities of it and, um, you know, just get your expertise on it. But first, you know, for our listeners, could you just give them a quick background of who you are and what got you inspired to start Mobile Enterprises? Absolutely. Well, again, I am Jessica Lewis, co-owner of Mobile Enterprises, where we build residential and commercial structures out of shipping containers. And um, something that kind of allowed for us to get into this industry was, I actually was a project manager on other types of container construction on the West Coast. And as a result of that, you know, my partner then, he says, we can do this on our own. <laughs> so it came from working on other projects that we saw the impact and how easy it was to be in that world. And we decided to branch off on our own. And so we had a conversation with some of our um, then, so to speak, like employers at that time, some of our customers that we were working with, and got a blessing from them to branch off and do our own thing. Um, we decided that it was the best way to go because we noticed that when people were dealing with natural disasters, it was really hard for them to kind of recoup and get back to the way life was pre-disaster. And so Knowing um, now what I learned about construction and what I've learned about containers, it's a perfect match for not just natural disaster recovery, but pretty much anything. Um, it probably will be the singular thing that could solve any housing type issue, any kind of construction challenge. So that's kind of why we got into it. And so to keep continue with that, I've noticed that um, – you know, some people say that's like the the minimalist transition from going from a big house to now a shipping container house. But it seems like it's more um, not just economically better, but also, as you said, structurally better because you're dealing with steel and, you know, it's fireproof. Um, I forget what else uh, did you had on your website, but the benefits of it structurally um, can it's safer essentially than having a regular home. Um, can you talk about like how, how can one start that transition? What to inv either to invest in one or to just get the idea to know that um, this way of living is not, you know, taboo because it is starting to trend upwards. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, for starters, um, I would say a lot of people have the, idea that container has to be small living. So when you use the word minimalist, you think that you're coming from a larger space into a smaller space. What is great about containers is that you literally can make it as small or as large as you want it to be. And so some of the most of the projects we've worked on were um, either multifamilies or they were larger houses. So 50, between 15 and um, 3,500 square feet. So while you can use a container for a tiny living, um, that's not the most common use, but it is a, a, a more popular use because of most people, like you said, wanting to become a minimalist. Um, I say the best use of a container is either a tiny home or a multifamily. Some of the times when we're looking to do that single family home, it's not realistic to think that 
um, it's always going to be cost effective because depending on what all a person wants to go into the home and also depending on location, it could be almost as costly as the traditional build out. So I encourage people when they're wanting to get into this world, the container life, I call it, that they do a little bit more research because depending on where you live, it could get really costly um, based off of everything that people want to go into it. So when people come to us and they want consultations, they want like all the bells and whistles like a mansion. And they're thinking that it's going to be really cheap. And I'm like, you want expensive materials, <laughs> you know, the construction part of it is not going to be an issue. But remember, your finishes is what makes it costly. So I would give that as a, a piece of advice is when you're looking to um, use the container home, remember the build out may not be much, but your finishes is what could call, make it a little bit more expensive and almost as costly as a traditional build out. Is there a, uh, you know, um, benefit to having a shipping container as opposed to a regular home as far as like impact on the environment? Um, is it as far like does our footprint does that does it help having a shipping container uh, home? Yes, uh, <clears throat> both ways. So for starters, you ask about what the durability benefits are. So it's wind, water, and fireproof, and then it actually because it's getting an additional use, you are lowering the impact on Earth because normally a container would just be sitting at a port. Um, so now you're reusing it. And for another way, which is in the way of construction. And again, depending on the finishes, it can be fully green constructed, meaning everything in your house can be fully recyclable. So it's just a matter of what the end user wants. And that's in the case of a house, but you definitely can, even with your multifamilies, industrial build outs and other kind of commercial build outs, you can make it comparable as far as either it being green materials as the end finishes or some traditional things. So it's just a matter of what the person wants, but it definitely has a, either way you're winning as far as it's lowering its impact on the earth, as well as the end user and the inhabitants um, use of it. So a lot of people don't know that they're allergic to their houses. <laughs> you know, the material that goes into your house, so rather it's the drywall, the carpet, the wood, you'd be surprised that, Things you may not, as um, a younger person, had allergies to. As you get older, you may get allergies. And so even for the end user, being cognizant of what your finishes are could really help improve your overall health within that house. See, I'm glad you brought that up. So here in Baltimore, um, we, there's always been issues with the lead paint as far as with the housing, lead paint poisoning, um, asbestos. As you said earlier uh, about the drywall, some people are allergic to that stuff. Um, is this, can this be, uh, I guess you can say a solution to helping those needs as far as with one health and then also housing. Um, I've seen some designs on the website and other designs online of how they're building almost a car apartment complexes um, out of the shipping container housing. And, you know, with homelessness and everything, I know, you know, people need to make their money, but at the same time with in helping um S mitigate that issue? Is this a cost-effective way for states and is, is something that, um, you know, can, can help out in the long run while we try to find a solution to, sol to end this? I would say using containers could be the, literally the one thing that can solve any housing challenge. Um, the use containers are everywhere for one. <laughs> There's ports all over the world. So you never have to worry about having um, a supply and demand thing. They're stock, they're, you know, they're stacked pretty high. Most places that you go to, you can ride past any kind of port and kind of see that. So that by itself, that supply and demand piece of it is always going to be there. There's plenty of supply. You don't have to worry about that. As far as solving housing crises or housing issues, I tell people to, if you really want to know where your city or your municipality is going, look at the comprehensive or consolidated plan. It will give you an idea of what your council people, your state reps, your congress people 
are looking at to see the direction for that particular area that you live in. And so health-wise, safe-wise, when it comes to lead and some other things that you talked about earlier in, our, in the question, it solves all of that. Um, whatever you place in it, one, because everything is being custom built, you'll know, you'll choose what goes into your house or into your office building or your multifamily, whatever your project is, but also realize too, depending on the area, one, people are under this impression that they're ugly. If they can get past the look of it, they they can understand. And HUD is now understanding that because they have an innovative housing um, conference every year. They canceled it for this year, but they're even open to alternative ways to um, solve housing crisis and also just in construction in general. So when people realize that part of it, one, what's happening in your area, you have to stay informed with these consolidated or comprehensive plans on what where the um, direction of your areas are. But the containers can solve a lot of issues, residentially and commercially. So when you're talking about even right now, trying to maximize space, you can add an accessory dwelling unit because you guys are in that DMV area. You can add an accessory dwelling unit or additional source of income, even as an additional space for in-laws or college students that, you know, want to be grown and not want to live in the house anymore. And then in general, when it comes even to commercial space, you know, land is everywhere. We have uh, abundance of land throughout the United States, but being able to build out using the containers because it is quicker than traditional construction is a great way to use space that's already in existence. So, you can get as creative as you want with a container. It's just a matter of you. Um, I look at it as what problem are you solving? Um, and that number one thing I know for sure across the United States and internationally, if you use containers, it can solve housing crisis very easily. Now, how how different um, is the process of the shipping container process as opposed to a regular housing process like when one's like okay i'm going to move and to get into the shipping container living how different is that process is it the same thing they have to go through the same um tiers of like process or is it completely new that people need to expect no it actually isn't um a lot of people think it's significantly different but it's not so um, traditional construction uses stick bill or wood to build a frame. In this type of construction, green construction, we are using a container. Um, so cost-wise, when you compare it to traditional construction, the container is the frame. So once you get a container, your frame is already done. You know, once it's delivered, you stack it or side by side, however you have it set up, it's all, that part is already done. So manpower and cost, you already knocked out wood because depending on the crew that you're using for your frame for traditional construction, it could take days, you know, or even weeks for them to be able to build out a house to according to your specifications. And so even if um, you compare it to drywall, which would technically be the next step or, you know, and, and that traditional construction phase versus a um, container, even if you use drywall, we don't, but even if you did, that's another thing that when you go neck by neck, you are already ahead of the curve as far as time. You know, you already pretty much halfway done <laughs> the house by the time you get your container set up. So you're just cutting out for windows, doors, adding your utilities and you're done. So time-wise and manpower-wise, there's a difference. Of course, you know, cost-wise, there's a difference. But everything has to be up to code, which is according to whatever that municipality is. So that's what I mean by it's not much different. We're not doing anything significantly different. It's just some of our processes are um, a little less complex than traditional construction. So when you guys, you know, were originally in on the West Coast, doing the shipping container thing and made the transition into um, becoming your own company and, and, and also a black owned company. What are you, what are you noticing as far as um, this way of business, as opposed to regular real estate? Um, are you seeing an advantage in it? Is this a new way, a new wave that people can uh, get onto in particular black people, or are you seeing that uh, it's still it's still in the early phases, but it has potential to just be as advantageous as real estate? 
Well, to be honest with you, I actually um, would like to make it the new norm um, because I know long term, let's say you had a fire or a flood in your neighborhood, your house would be the only house still standing. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, it's it's uptrending. It's not as common but it's legal everywhere. It's just a matter of what municipality wants to accept its uh, legality. And I hope to see more people embrace it, more realtors get um, more acquainted with it, more appraisers get more acquainted with it so that, you know, depending on the area, um, an end user could have less challenges in regards to, you know, getting that process started. But Honestly, I feel very confident that it will be a new norm very soon for Black people, for other people, because it's used commonly across seas. They built stadiums, all kinds of things out of it. It's just America's a little slower, if that makes sense. And so it's even worse when you break down city by city, locale, municipalities, all of that. You'll see very easily how people actually, you don't, it's just not common, you know? And so when you have those conversations with planning and zoning, you know, your challenge is comfort and just not being familiar with it. And how, how are ways that we uh, can help support businesses like yours as far as, cause you know, you're honestly the first only black owned business that I've heard uh, regarding this thing. And like I said, I was excited because I've been thinking about doing this for quite some time. And, you know, it's something that I definitely want to support and I want others to support you as well. So what are ways that we can, you know, help, I guess, spread the word, but only, but not only is this something you can invest in as real estate, like real estate, you can with regular real estate. For sure. Well, a couple of things. The number one way I would encourage people to support the container life is to kind of understand it a little bit more. YouTube is okay, but unfortunately, YouTube, they edit. So like I, I'm still I, YouTube University. I go to YouTube University a lot for different things. But I noticed that a lot of that stuff is so edited that you're not really understanding what all goes into it. So a lot of times when people come to me for consultations, they saw something on HGTV, the glamorization of it, mm -hmm. not knowing what all goes into it. Like, for instance, it's a possibility, depending on where you want your property at, that you can't get a container there logistically you know but people are like oh i want a container home what's your zip code you know is it possible can it fit down your street can a crane if you want it stacked be able to comfortably be in that space and you know maneuver so it's so many things that go into it so i would say the first part of supporting is to become more educated about it our website is chock full of information because I'm very big on education because I want you to really understand what you're experiencing. You know, um, it's not something that um, someone asked about us teaching classes. We are teaching some classes um, next this coming weekend, actually, at the Big Black Camp Out with the lovely families that bought some um, property in Toomsboro, Georgia. They're having a, a camp out here in Toomsboro this weekend. So I'm teaching a class there and I'm going to work on teaching more classes so if you see me you follow us on you know instagram or something definitely look forward to those classes not just there but more upcoming classes because it's a it's a learning curve um other ways to support when you talk about investing couple things one you're able to invest we have passion projects that we're working on that we'll be acquiring land and doing multi-families um quads to about eight plexus, which is that middle market where it's very hard to find housing um, around the country for that middle market. So that's our focus. But within that focus, we're actually working with ex-offenders and veterans um, to place them in the housing units so that they can become more self-sufficient. Um, and so people who want to invest in those projects, of course, they can always send us an email info at shippingliving.com to say, hey, I'm interested in investing. We have all kinds of projects coming up that are our business projects. They're not customer projects, but we also have ones where we actually created like an investment group. Um, um, on Facebook, we're called International Investors Group. 
um, Inter International Investors United group um, where you guys can join that group and start seeing all the different people who are into the container life. So we have engineers, we have architects, we have just um, project managers, foremans, Anybody you can think of is in that group. And our goal is to do projects together as a collective. We really want to buy back the land. Um, so when we talk about reparations and how we can get ahead as Black people, we're buying back land like our ancestors used to do, and we're building new communities. And so that's the number two way that people can, of course, kind of get more involved with us, um, support, you know, like, share, subscribe, the traditional ways. But if you really want to have an active involvement, definitely educating yourself and definitely getting involved with our investor group. If nothing else, to get the, educa the education and the fellowship of other people who have that same like mind as you. Could you talk about more about um, what you just said regarding uh, ex-offenders and, and uh and veterans and what what the the benefits of that uh could be for them for sure um all right so another part that we didn't talk too much about was that we are a registered department of labor apprenticeship program um by being that the goal is one for us as minority businesses to be able to hire more rapidly. Um, and by having an apprenticeship program, it helps us teach people from start to finish what it's like to be in green construction, because it's a green construction apprenticeship program. It's not, it has some traditional components, but they'll learn about solar energy. They'll learn about green materials. They'll learn about how to be an entrepreneur, because we want our people to become subcontractors or partners with us. We don't want people working for us. And so when you talk about ex-offenders and veterans, those are the most underlooked populations. I was in human services for over 15 years. I worked in the prisons. I was a counselor. I did a little bit of everything. And I knew firsthand the challenges that ex-offenders have. And so I know for a fact that the prison system does not rehabilitate. And so our goal, um, focusing on that particular population, is to help them get reacquainted, readjusted to being what they call model citizens, don't know what that looks like anymore nowadays, but we'll be helping them through training, education, and jobs, and our housing to be able to become more self-sufficient. So when you people get into crime because of their circumstances, their environments, create a new environment, which is through the use of acquiring land and building new communities, that will allow people to get exposed to new opportunities. And in my head, I'm crazy enough to think that people can change, knowing that there's something other than what they're used to out there. As for the veterans, um, my both of my grandfathers were, were in the military, Air Force and Army. And so I also see that side too, having volunteer for volunteer um, veteran organizations that they are highly neglected. Many of them don't know the benefits they're entitled to. They are homeless. We have a significant amount of veterans here in my city that are homeless and just seeing how they're treated after, you know, they're literally sacrificing their lives to make sure we're safe. I don't like that. You know, that doesn't sit well with me. And so I have some partnerships with some veteran organizations, same thing for them. We'll be helping them with housing and other kind of programming. We have a really awesome person on our staff that can help them get their benefits, whatever they're entitled to. They may not even know they're entitled to it, but that's a part of our intake process to make sure that they are now able to acclimate back into society and be treated, you know, like the people that have been sacrificing their lives for us. And so, you know, those two populations hit home for me just because of my experiences. And I just want people to understand that even with, um, you can use these for group homes, transitional homes, assisted living facilities, containers can be used for whatever. So there's other populations that people may not resonate so much with the ex-offender or veterans, but it could be a mother baby program. It can be aged out foster kids. It can be senior citizens. So whatever you guys are doing for your investments and your projects, make sure you're solving some kind of issue. You know, I'm a social entrepreneur. We're not just doing this for the sake of doing this. Everybody wants to make money, but if you solve a problem, you will make money because most likely that problem is strong enough that what you're doing is going to make an impact within it and everybody's going to know you're doing it. And so money will flood you. So I tell people, 
get in it for the right reasons. <laughs> Definitely. And so speaking of solving issues, so the apprenticeship program um, here in Baltimore, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, it's made national use, but we have the squeegee, uh, I guess you can say issue um, where a lot of the kids here, they do squeegeeing on the street corners to earn a money and a living. And having talked to some of them, you know, uh, they do understand education, but some of them, they just can't do school. And, you know, yeah. school uh, is not for everyone. I mean, it's hard for people to understand that school's not for everyone. Do you see that? I'm not saying that uh, ship container construction is easier, but do you see that this is, could be a way uh, for children or younger adults um, who didn't follow that same societal path with, regarding education as a way for them to get into something uh, as apprenticeship with construction, uh, finding, you know, this looks like it's the futuristic way of doing things. So is this a way for them to get acclimated into the construction field um, and get them like, you know, um, exposed to new things? For sure. Um School isn't for everyone. I have two degrees and still feel like school wasn't for me. So, you know, you have to know where your your strengths and weaknesses are. And again, when you talk about exposure, if someone hasn't been exposed to anything that more than what they know, you can't expect them to give you more than what they have. And so knowing what you just said, it would be a perfect opportunity for young people to learn a new way of life or a new way to acquire funds. Um, and what I say with that is all of our apprenticeship programs, what makes it register is we have to have formal education. So I know they may not be hip to regular traditional school like a college or university, but we have partnerships with technical schools. Um, we're actually um, looking to work with Job Corps. So depending on their age, they still would need to go to traditional school because that's what teaches them the foundational principles of that industry, which is rather you're you know, going to be an electrician or plumbing, whatever, you still have to take some kind of formal education. And so um, it's not like people just come to us and they work with us. They actually have to go to school and work with us. And it doesn't matter how old they are. So they're, work, they're uh, earning while learning, they call it. And I used to call it work study back when I was an undergrad. Mm -hmm. But it's like you have to go to school and you have to work. So they'll go to school a portion of the day and then they'll come and work with us a portion of the day. So it's a good opportunity, just if nothing else, to get more exposure to the young people so they can see some new things that they can learn. Um, but also, more importantly, they're making money while going to school. So they may not like school, but if you're making money while going to school, you learn a new skill, you know, you get to meet some new people, you get that exposure, it probably could um, shift their mindset. And speaking of mindset, can, can you discuss, I know for me, um, yes, with shipping container living, it is a smaller space, but for me, I realized how much, how little I do need. And I'm still saying, you know, sane and comfortable and everything. And, and today's day and age where everything's very chaotic and, and stressful, it, could you like dive into what benefits men, uh, mentally do you see with this ship and container living? Um, you know, for me, I feel just like it's just so it's much more peaceful um, and, 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 uh, and just less stress on the mind. Whereas, you know, some people with a regular home, I mean, it's always, I can say when my mom has to call me this broke or this broke or this broke, <laughs> yeah. not that you're yeah. not going to have those issues with a shipping container, but I just feel that, uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's different. I feel like it's something that you're not have to, you don't have to worry about as much, but there's other things to, uh, beneficial that to, to that way of living. I like the way you described it. Yes, I would say the simplicity and durability of a container. So in a container home mixed with our one of our products that we use called Smart Steel, um, combined, those two materials combined, you have less problems. So roof leaks, not happening. You know, I don't know what other challenges. I don't had all kinds of stuff happen. I, my first house I bought was 118 years old. So, you know, I, I done been there, done that with any kind of house issue, you know, whether it was plumbing, roofing, you know, floors cracking, whatever. 
that just doesn't happen with the container. So your upkeep is less when you're talking about um, energy cost. If you couple it with the solar panel, you know, you have reduced energy cost. Um, when you talk about simplicity, it's a simple design. It's square, you know, rectangular. Like there's not much else to it. We can't make it, you can't make it circle or any of that, but it will always have the simplicity of, you know, when you talk about free flowing, you know, everything is open space, you know, you don't have any things that's blocking you, of course, unless you want walls and all that stuff, but it's like a real opportunity for people to find a new way to get their feng shui back. You know, it's a, a awesome environment with how you position your, you know, your furniture and your um, fixtures and all that stuff. It kind of allows for you to have, you know, free energy just throughout the house. And I'm very big on energy. So that's also too why we do a lot of new development projects versus most people in real estate, they're doing fixing and flipping. When you put new energy into a property or a land or a project, the energy that continues to stay there is what was initially placed there. Um, and a lot of times that energy force kind of um, offsets anything that's opposite of it. When you're doing fix and flips, for instance, you don't know who died in that house. <laughs> you don't know what happened. And you just don't know. And so you may be fixing something. It's like uh, what they call in the Bible, you put new wine and old skins. That's how I feel about fixing and flipping. When you're doing new construction and new development, you know, you can put, you can place whatever kind of energy that's in there. And I'm glad I have a good partner. We have a good team. So I know whatever's going in there, whoever, it, whoever embodies that energy you know, it's going to be beneficial to them. So I would say all of that is included with, you know, a container build out, at least with us. I don't know about other companies. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know that place is haunted. And then you end up coming up into like, a, Man. <laughs> so it's so and you experience that like energy transfer is real. People don't even realize like that is a real thing. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Ms. Lewis, could you let the listeners know where they can follow you and they can help you guys improve this business and everything? Absolutely. On Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, we're Shipping Living. So at Shipping Living. Our website is www.shippingliving.com. And our email is info at shippingliving.com. You can DM us on any of those platforms. Send us the email. Um, we have an 800 number. If you decide you want to call, it's 888-412-8362, extension 3. Reach out to us. Let us know your wildest dreams. Our model is the sky is not the limit. So if you think it, we can build it. And if you build it, they will come. So don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the people. Don't worry about none of that stuff. You create something that people like, love, they are going to gravitate towards it. So when you talk about good energy, it's about what you put into it. So yeah, reach out to us, guys. Thank you so much for ha having you uh, for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate the info. Uh, I'm going to get a little, you know, secret, more secrets, you know, once we get off here. But okay. thank you guys for listening and watching the Baltimore Guys. I'm your host, Brazil. If you like this, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.